Hello. I actually want to change to a um to the actual client. Okay. So cool. don't record. Oh, it's recording, but <laughs> I'll fix it later. I'm gonna eat my Brussels sprouts anyway. Fair enough. Did anyone actually click attending? I'm not going to check either because my life, my computer is likely to crash. Fair enough. All right, I'm changing over. Over Holden. Cool bananas. Cool. Can you still hear me? I can. Hey, there he is. <coughs> In stereo, I see. We are good to go. Yeah, good to go. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this extremely impromptu alpha podcast. I ain't got time for that. Um, I like the name. Yeah. I was, uh, um, was reflecting on what you keep saying to me. And I figured it was a good name. <laughs> um. I'm Zeke Condon, a uh, product entrepreneur, helping other product entrepreneurs become product entrepreneurs. Um, and this is Ilan. Introduce yourself. Ilan, program manager, been in the tech space for a number of years, currently in the telco software um, space, focused on a number of different initiatives. Um, and we'll get into it and talk a little bit more as the weeks progress. Yeah. Yeah. So, Ilan, why, why are we doing this? <laughs> I think that's a very good question um, and one that will probably take a bit of time to unpack. But I think accountability is a good one. Um, mm. I think we have a number of conversations. Um, we speak quite regularly. We come up with a number of different ideas. Everywhere. And it would be a, a way for us to stay accountable, but also a way for everyone listening in to also be kept accountable for the different things that they would like to start doing. Mm, awesome. Any thoughts yes. from your side, anything you would add to that? I would just like to say that um, it's not two years we've been doing this. It's almost three years now that we've been catching up regularly on a Tuesday at 1245 until 1 15. Um, very random time spot that's just been in my calendar for that long. So yeah, accountability is definitely really cool. Um, but it's also that ideas buddy. Um, I call it the ideas. Like I love, I love having those crazy ideas that um, I can throw past you, and you more often than not validate them by telling me it's a stupid idea. Um, and <laughs> so, but yeah, we we I, I love we talk about great big big topics and big ideas, and um, you have a very different way of thinking about things that I do. That means that um, we unpack amazing concepts and conversations, and. Uh, for me, I want to give that back to the greater community. And I also want to bring in some new kind of blood into this conversation. Um, so, you know, the opportunity to open it up to the world and, and find out what other people want to hear about, um, potentially interviewing some people, uh, that kind of stuff, I think is, is some pretty cool concepts. Um, I think, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I would say, you know, why we're here, I think. Um, oh, absolutely. And I think the idea of bringing in um, different um, people, different ideas, different concepts is a great one, because I think what we've kind of seen over the last few years is um, different people have different mindsets um, and understanding their mindsets, understanding how they tackle different problems mm -hmm. is kind of key to learning a bit about yourself, but also learning a bit about um, what a good approach to solving problems is. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, big time on the mindsets thing. I think we've spoken about mindsets more than 
any other topic over the last couple of years. Like there's always a, a reflection around, um, you know, something that's coming up in the corporate world, the business world, technology, politics, environment, whatever. And um, it's been very cool to unpack those conversations very quickly with you around what, what do you think, what, what are they thinking? Why, why are they doing that? What, what, what's their, you know, what's their mindset? And mindset's become the buzzword du jour, but we've, keep unpacking that what are people thinking and um yeah like that that human-centered design you know let's throw out buzzwords here but for me human-centered design has been an evolution and now i've got a, a buzzword for it but and same with this mindset stuff but um keeping to talk about that want to get that back into into this podcast and into the the information that we get out into the world is like think about what people are thinking and it gives you i don't know insight into uh, you know why silly decisions are made or why great decisions are made or um even forecasting out some concepts that might happen like i can't recall any off the top of my head but we've had a few conversations where we're like predicting the future um over covid you know what what businesses would do and um where they would go and where the politics and and the rest like that would go that was quite that was quite fun and um i've got a lot of messages in whatsapp between you and i around you know remind me in one year about this to check back in <laughs> and i think you touched on it early on and that is that that is one of the reasons we have the conversation is you come from a very different world to the world that i come from mm. and the com the combination is incredibly powerful and insightful um when you spend too much time in the same eco chamber um you miss out on that um mm. And that's kind of one of the major drivers for us to actually start these conversations mm. and try and bring more people into the fold. So how would you describe the difference in our worlds between you and I? Put you on the spot. Oh, that's a, that's a good one. Um, I, I think mine's more structured. Mm. Um, yours is probably slightly looser around the edges with a much more of a creativity slant to it. Um, and that's been great because that's where some of the great, the unique ideas come from. And that's where, um, the introduction of new, um, new thought processes and stuff, at least for me, um, mm -hmm. has been quite, um, good and kind of opened my eyes. I don't know. What's your take? Yeah, I'd say exactly that. But then, you know, in the world of creativity, and um, coming up with concepts and for me it's uh, you know that what I do is getting out with the people right getting out with pr prospective customers and, and spending as much time in as many different niches of, of humans like I constantly get told do you do you work Zeke and it's like well I do but what I'm doing is you know being amongst the people, like like you know, in in a space around where my customers and where the different products I'm working with, who are the people that are using those products? Either they're business to consumer or business to business. But I don't spend as much time back in the business, and so, you know, I come firing with these great ideas, but then what I you know what I lack is that that insight, and that's where it kind of it's like really great to talk to you about how would this you know what's the best way to shape up this concept and this innovation or this this you know new thing that we could do back into the world of corporate and appreciate that the people in there have only got so much attention right because they have got a broader picture of things going on they're not just focused on the little innovative thing that's coming up which is where i kind of deal with back into the corporate world is the innovations and new things so it's really great to have that perspective or the bigger picture but from within inside the machine and you know being able to ask me those questions around you know how is a business structured how are they doing it how might the people within a business work um, and that's stuff you can't you can't kind of get unless you're inside a big corporate and um, you know I, I've gotten that perspective which is why I really appreciate your perspective because I've been there you know I've been in the big T and and I've done it it's not for me at the moment um, but I can appreciate your perspective and yeah so it's two worlds come together around how can you I don't know it's mindsets right how can you kind of manage the existing but also create the new um, and have those two worlds and ecosystems coexist um, so yeah, yeah and I think that's it 
that's going to be a great theme that we can kind of carry through throughout the conversations because mm. you obviously have a revitalized lens on things now. Um, you're not kind of operating at that level on a day-to-day basis anymore, but you can still relate to it. Mm. Um, and I think the idea of bringing in um, through our conversations questions um, that people are seeing on a day-to-day basis um, that they're having trouble solving, um, that maybe they just need a fresh set of eyes across um, would be great to unpack. So anyone listening in, if you've got anything you want to raise, if you want us to talk to it, um, we'll look to do this weekly. Yep. Send the questions in um, and we'll be back next Tuesday. Weekly at 12.45 to 1.15. Just talking about talking about the big issues between you know, the, the world of the corporate machine and the world of, of, you know, customer and the difference between those two things. Um, I'll throw a question out to you now, Ilan, and, and, you know, this is, let's get personal. What would, what would you like to get from working on this podcast? I mean, my, my personal kind of thing is, you know, tag here, this is for Telos. I, you know, I, I need to promote my personal um, company brand and, and what I do. Um, so you know, there's my tag. Um, how about you? What, what do you want to get from from this? Be shameless. It's okay. <laughs> wow. Um, eating my Brussels sprout. Sorry. So you better don't leave it open because otherwise I can't talk. Um. Oh, okay. Well, now you know that I'm going to do just that. Um. <laughs> Uh, and I think that um, honestly, what I'd like to get out of it is just another avenue to have a conversation. Um, I don't have necessarily an end goal that I need that this needs to deliver on. Um, and I think to me, that's what's exciting about it. Um, there's so much structure in what I do on a day to day basis. Um, there's so much intent behind everything that I do that to have an outlet that doesn't have that. Mm-hmm. Um, is sometimes something that I lack. Mm. Oh, that's a diff- totally different perspective. It's not an outcome focus, more of it's a, a saying I've heard before, the mental floss, right, to clean out the gaps in between. Mm. Uh, just to kind of um, put, a bit, put a bit more context on it, um, I, last weekend, um, I kind of just had a bee in my bonnet that I wanted to spend a bit of time learning Python, um, querying some APIs. Um, I haven't sat um, in a dev console for probably close to a decade. <laughs> and I think every now and then, I'm not sure, maybe it's unique to me, but you just have an itch that needs to be scratched. Mm. Um, and this time it's, you know, how do you spend a bit more time having constructive conversations? Um, and trying to kind of in- increase the reach of those conversations. Yep. Cool. Um, so my marketing spiel aside, um, what I want to get from this is communicate that message around um, vulnerability, you know, like having open conversations and being human um, and how powerful that is and, and you know, not having agendas. Uh, like one of the reasons I got out of the corporate world was because no matter how hard I tried to get a, you know, to sort of fit in with the cool kids. And there was always like a, a small subject of cool kidness within any of the organizations I work with. If you weren't in the cliche group, then, you know, you, you, you weren't, you know, weren't able to perform. You weren't happy in your job. You wasn't satisfied. Decisions were being made without you. Um, and, you know, so to me, I want to use this as an engine to sort of break that mold and, and have like vulnerable conversations and, and start to act human again back into the business world. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is an engine for me to, to talk about humanness back into, the, <laughs> into what we do on a daily basis. Um, ask why, you know, I want, to, I want to be able to ask why on a broad scale and, and you know, back out to listeners, guys, like... Um, another great topic for us to, to touch on on a regular basis is why, like, if you've got any big questions that, that you, you wonder why, and, and, you know, you don't have the connections to answer that, throw us the question. Um, let's see if we can use this as a, as a place to, to answer those big why questions around, you know, the world of 
business, innovation, technology, politics. Um, well, let's try and take on some of those big why questions and see if we can bring people in, bring in ideas, bring in concepts, use this as an engine to answer those why questions. Um, and I, yeah, it's, it takes a lot to kind of go out on a limb and, and be vulnerable like this and sort of like, you know, I, I, people, people I'm feel put like- you on the spot. Yeah. I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay, um, okay. Like I recently read Netflix, No Rules Rules, um, talks a lot about the culture within Netflix, um, transparency, um, and really owning problems, owning why decisions were made, and then talking through consequences once those decisions have played out. Um, so you spoke spoke a bit about that vulnerability element. Mm. Um, why do you think that it's such um, it's such a taboo subject in most organisations? Um, because uh, the the eat like so from an individual point of view. Um, we are only, we exist within ecosystems and our personal ecosystems and our influence bubbles. And for those listening in, I'm drawing circles in, in the air at the moment. Um, so our, our, our influence bubbles, right? We can only really make decisions that affect us personally. And we can make influence suggestions that affect those who are within our influence circle. Um, and we've built an influence circle through time and through relationships. Um, but then outside of that circle, it's really like, you know, fishing in an ocean without a fish finder, right? You, you don't really know if you're going to get what you need. You try to line up the, you know, kind of line up your ducks and get things done, but it's, it's always a gamble and there's always a risk. Now within an organization that happens on a, you know, on a, on a large scale because your culture, you know, business is thrown over as like the driving force and culture is not considered from a human centered point of view. Like there's no, like you know, I was used to be a chef and um, the, the getting to the F bomb was like the fastest thing when you'd walk into a kitchen, like at the, you know, within 15 minutes, someone was telling you to F off and you drop all your guards as soon as that happens, but you go into the corporate world and people are trying to protect their circles of influence and they don't, you know, they don't, they're not sure about anyone. And so it takes a longer time to get to having people inside their, their, their circles of influence. And it's kind of this, it's this catch 22. It's like, you need people to be inside your circle of influence, but you don't want somebody penetrating your circle of influence and then blowing it apart. So, so you don't trust any people. So your circle of influence doesn't grow. And then the business changes and then your circle of influences moves. And, and that's why I think it's like, you know, that again, vulnerability, human centeredness, just being open, um, you know, being okay to make mistakes, that kind of stuff is, is the, it, it's still missing within corporate culture. From my point of view as an outsider, um, from your point of view as an insider, like, do you see that? Or is this just me kind of, you know, using insights that are really old? Oh, uh, you, you're giving your age away. Um, <laughs> I think, no, there's absolute merit to that. And I think one of the things that I see um, on a day-to-day -day basis is obviously a lot of um, churn within organisations mm. uh, and structure within the organisations doesn't necessarily speak to long-term establishment. Um, you've got kind of your sort of... Um, I'm going to say newer age frameworks on the one hand, mm. whether it's new age or whether it's just a different type of framework on the one hand that speaks to more of a product led team. Um, you look at establishing that team and that team existing for a longer period of time. You've got the other mentality on the one, on the other hand, where you've got project based teams that form and then disband relatively quickly. Mm. And I think that all plays into it because I think that, that is a major factor in that trust element. Yeah. Um, the team starts, finishes, and then um, a couple of months later, you evaluate the success of a project. The, those long-term bonds don't necessarily um, exist to that point. Yeah. So conversations that happen then aren't necessarily conversations around, well, this is my team. How did we as a team go? But more so this is what happened in the past. I don't really work with these people anymore. So this is how I went. Mm. And how do you 
change that rhetoric. Um, so, so an interesting thing that I see in the world of startup and small business is that a lot of that is thrown out under the bus. Um, individuals come in with their own personal character and their own personal brand, and they just wear their heart on their sleeve. And, you know, they make mistakes and then they talk about them. And, and, and you know, there might be one project, there might never be a project, but the networking that they do is so strong. Um, and, and it's so, it's personal, you know, it's personally network building. And but they, they kind of, they, you know, small businesses and how they interact, they interact the same as like project teams or, or business units within a large corporate, but they've dropped the guard, you know, because they've got so much more responsive, personal responsibility in terms of the overall, what they have. They don't just have like a silo. And this is my assumption, right? Is that it's, they don't have a silo. They have a full responsibility for the whole product, the whole, you know, the whole value chain of what they do. So they need to, they need to kind of be fully on top of it, but they don't have the time to be the perfect political citizen. So they have to just go and wear a lot of their heart on their sleeve and create more real rich connections with, with networks. And they do that by just going, okay, I'm either going to get along with you or I don't get along with you. And the ones they get along with, then, you know, they, they, it, it multiplies their network effect. Um, I'd like, look, let's, let's unpack that at some stage. Like, you know, why, why, how, why, ah, how do you, how do you make, how do you break down those boundaries and those barriers and, and, and create decent culture, like, like workplace culture, individuals that are ready to jump from startup to bit to corporate to startup and, and, and still wear their own personal heart on their sleeve and be effective. Is that the right thing to do? I don't know. It's what I do. Um, and it's what I see a lot of small businesses do. And it's what I see is missing from the corporate world. So yeah, keen to, if anyone's out there who, who has commentary on why that wouldn't work within the corporate world, having individuals wearing their heart on their sleeve and just going after it. Maybe it's someone from HR or something like that. Um, send us a message. Um, let's get you on and let's have a conversation about it. Um, so uh, just to make sure we stay kind of within our time boundaries here. I want to keep this pretty short. Um, <clears throat> question to you, how do we, how do you want to do this? Alan? like, on a, like the, how do you want to do this? Oh, that's a good one. I, I like the free flow mentality. Um, I do think that there's definitely a richness to that. Um, where I see this going, I think, if we start with one or two questions a week that we want to answer, mm. let's spend 20, 30 minutes talking through that. Um, probably cap it, actually cap it at 20 minutes, yep. 10 minutes to just kind of um, talk, talk through a couple of things that have happened over the course of the last week. Um, but that way we can kind of really stay within that half an hour sort of time span. Yeah, nice. No, I agree. Time box it, keep it, keep it fine. Keep it, uh, confined so you can kind of push out the message um great and uh in terms of getting someone on to interview um let's uh let's just see who listens and and what questions we come up with i think someone from who can answer that question if someone knows someone and that's a good starting point is there anyone you would like to or any space of, of the world you know the principles the values the culture of the world um and what we've talked about is there any concept that you want to dig into imminently that maybe we can throw it out there i think one i might take on notice but i think that um over the course of the next few weeks it'd be great to kind of cycle through a range of different topics mm. we obviously love the mindset one um there's i'm doing a course at the moment around um with ideo um be great to revisit some of those concepts and that's design um, thinking just for those design who thinking yeah, design thinking yep um, so it'd be great to cycle through a range, but I think let's keep it relevant. Let's keep it relevant to what's happening over the course of the week. Cool. Um, yeah. News topics and the rest like that. What's going on? That sounds good too. Um, and then, uh, last question is like who? So I think we kind of answered that. If we want to have, um, anyone on as guests, um, please messages. Um, cool. Um, final thoughts from Milan. I'm going to flip it on its head and go with Zeke. What, <laughs> what thoughts do you have? 
Um, final thoughts. Um, you cannot delegate what you do not understand. <clears throat> it's not delegation. It's something else. Oh, I think very relevant. Um, and it's something that you experience on a day-to-day -day basis. So often um, you walk out of a meeting, you put a couple of actions against people, not really knowing um, what the outcome is you're after. Hmm. And it just sends you down the spiral and you see it manifest in so many different ways, whether it's at work, whether it's at home. Um, how do you, how do you, in your position, who kind of, you know, sits above or not above, beside people and influence them as opposed to manage them, how do you, how do you deal with that delegation challenge? Like what are some of the strategies you use right now? I think you've got to start with the why. Yep. Um, and it's a theme that's going to come up continuously. But when you really understand why you're doing something, it's so much easier to get the buy-in. Mm. And um, whether that's you need help with the task problem, whether you want to motivate for a new project to start or a program to start, hell, whether you want to start a new business, if you don't really know why you're doing it and you can't really get people on that journey with you, Hmm. And so that's the so the delegation doesn't need to be that you, you don't delegate off a task that you don't understand the technology about. You you delegate off the purpose and and the outcomes that are required that are linked to the why and a shared understanding of the why is the way that you can delegate. Um, yeah. Very insightful. See, there you go. You've done it. Um, awesome. Uh, so um, to wrap it up, let's. Uh, going to send this out over all the socials we'll send it out over the um different podcast channels this was the alpha next week let's go with beta let's try out a format um we'll surmise the format very quickly before next week's session um any feedback any comments any questions we'll take them into our beta and then yep um take it from there thanks very much everyone for listening awesome thanks everyone chat soon Ciao. Cheers.